please introduce yourself, Debbie, because I might have missed you all. Not, not at all, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, I'm, I'm Debbie Hustings. I'm the NHS Partnership Manager for Carers in Surrey. Um, and we were going to be joined by our colleague, Chrissy Keynes, um, who is the Carers Lead for Surrey and Borders Mental Health Trust. But she does actually manage a caseload, too. I'm afraid she had a serious incident this morning, so I'm sorry she isn't here. But my wonderful colleague, Ron Critcher, is here. Ron, Thank you for inviting us today. I mean, we, no, I, I've been here all morning. I've just learned so much from everybody. I just think it's just, and I think the last speaker was saying, why wouldn't you implement John's campaign? And yeah, why wouldn't you do it? It just makes sense. But there you go. So, if we can go for our first slide. <laughs> Technology is always there, isn't it? Um, I think one of the things we were hoping to evidence today was the fact that John and um, Ron, uh, Chrissy and I work very much from an integrated team process. In Surrey, um, although um, Ron and I are commissioners, we work probably 90% of the time at the cold face working with providers, not just the mental health trust. We have five acute hospitals in Surrey. All of them are signed up to John's campaign. And we have three community providers too. And I'm working with them to actually establish how they might implement John's campaign. Very useful, the um, Age UK guide that's being produced about implementing John's campaign. Anyway, hoping that the, the slides are... I've been, I've been you don't have yeah, you did. Yeah. That, that's, that's okay because we, we, we have. I've got it on my iPhone, so I'm just. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about this. Not at all. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Leslie will get those, those sent out to you. Oh, wrong, wrong. Always has a flash drive. <laughs> I don't think we can make that work. There are wrong slides, but there is. <laughs> we can't use it. Okay, why don't we just hang on a minute? Why don't we change over the speakers and then we'll just go and find you? No, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you sure? Um, yeah, okay. So, um, one of the things um, uh, I learned in, in sort of all, well, apart from all the, you know, the morning's discussion is that the, we have to look at that triangle of care, don't we? We, we have to look at the patient, the carer, and the provider. And what we often forget in health, certainly, is, is, is the focus on um, the, the, the family and the carers um, aspect of that. And certainly, you know, every time there is a, a diagnosis, it may be a diagnosis for dementia, it may be a diagnosis for any other, uh, many other conditions, we have to remember that diagnosis is also to a family member. Probably that family member is suddenly <laughs> thrust into a life of caring that they haven't anticipated on. It could be a catastrophic incident like a stroke. I know we're talking about dementia today, so I do think that's really important, though, to think of it as whole systems. And I think the one voice that's not here in this room um, today is that of our young carers. And um, it, it's really wonderful, because we have Maria um, here. Do come and have a chat with Maria later. Maria is a young carer. She was actually born into her caring role. Um, and she's now um, interning with us in the Surrey Carers Team, and she teaches us a lot about what it is to be a carer. So, um, moving on very quickly, um, I work, um, who, who does my parent fashion? Skillford and Waverley CCG, although I work right across Surrey. And we were the first CCG to make a pledge to John's campaign because clearly, though we've got a room full of providers here, there is some contractual muscle behind John's campaign and implementing it. And so what we did is we looked very clear, carefully at what John's campaign was hoping to achieve. And we wanted to make a pledge to them to say, actually, each time we go out to re-procure, we're going to have some... Ooh, here I'm into lines. Um, uh, we're going to actually have some really explicit um, uh, carer components of that contract. Now, we've just re-procured our community care services, and in that, they were asked very specifically about what they were going to do to support carers. It wasn't just um, uh, carers in terms of community carers, but also our own staff carers, who are just as important. Now, in Surrey, we have 115,000 adult carers, and as I've mentioned, um, we also have 14,700 uh, young carers, those are the children who care. And really important to un understand the population's needs and before you can even start to commission services. But we have a very clear vision in Surrey what we want from our carers. We, we, we want to normalise caring. Uh, we don't want it to be a, a, a cultural thing. I, I think that the doctor earlier talked about 
um, the fact that it's a them and us. We, we, that's all got to go. Um, and we absolutely want consistency of service. We don't want our one hospital providing a carer's passport scheme in, in the east of Surrey, but no one's doing it in the north of Surrey. That's not going to work either. Um, and we absolutely want the NHS colleagues to do their best at identifying carers. We know 70% of people start their caring journey in an NHS setting. It's essential that our NHS colleagues are trained, have care awareness training. It's very simple. You know, it's not rocket science. Let's, let's actually skill our staff so that they feel you know, uh, really confident about identifying carers. And, and normally, you know, when I'm doing staff training, I just say, it's easy to identify the carers. They're the ones asking all the questions. Um, parity of steam. We're here, you know, talking about mental health. It's, it's absolutely essential. Um, I, I think, um, you know, Ron and I have been working with the Carers Agenda probably over 20 years now, and what we've noticed is that whereas the agenda has moved significantly forward, where people have a physical disability, the mental health um, uh, uh, area is, is still quite far behind. But we're really lucky because we have a very engaged mental health trust in Surrey. Um, they are members of Triangle Care. They, they have a very proactive stance around supporting carers, and they've actually. Um, just this year, um, committed to their own carriage charter. Um, so that's some of the things, that's some of our vision. So that's what we're wanting to look in terms of contractual terms. But what have we got in terms of how we're going to achieve that? So what's in our toolbox? I'm going to hand over to Ron now, because Ron, Ron's the tool man. Um, he's going to tell you a little bit about what you might look at to deliver some of these uh, I should, aspirations. I should wear your glasses, actually. You, you can, you, you can read one. <laughs> okay. Um, Within Surrey, we have a prevention mandate which we, we adopt, and also the memorandum of understanding. The memorandum of understanding is actually shared between social care and health and every other provider as well, and lots of people are signing up to the memorandum of understanding. And it's really important, it's about that parity of esteem. It's about why things happen in the east of the county and don't happen in the west of the county or the north of the county. So it's important that there's a universal offer for carers right across the path. Within social care, and within health as well, and it's important that I feel, and I know that the carers team feel within Surrey, that the services should fit around the carer. And we've got a long way to go with that. You know, this nine to five sort of mentality that people have as far as that's where we're going to had the service and the care of fixing for that service really should be the other way around, but we're a long way from doing that at the moment. Um, we have a multi-agency commissioning group and that's really, really important. And one of the things that struck me this morning, listening to everybody, is that's where John's campaign needs to land now within commissioning. It needs to be in the commissioning intentions in order to make sure that John's campaign is right across the whole of the UK and probably the world actually. I mean, it's that important, this whole thing is so important that we get that sort of thing. Um, we also have a Surrey Carers Pathway in Surrey, which our providers adopt. And it's a clear, concise way that carers are put through services, if they wish to be put through services. Some people, a lot of carers, don't want to go through social care. A lot of carers want uh, light touch services uh, produced by the voluntary sector because it feels less intimidating. So, you know, there are various ways that carers can get into service, um, and it's the no, no wrong doors approach that we adopt. And we get that NHS providers within Surrey to, to do that so, so that there is all sorts of different ways to get into service for carers and not only to sort of light statutory services. We also have a Surrey Carers prescription. Um, which we've been dealing with for about five, six years, and myself and Debbie are quite very involved in it, in fact. And the way the carer's prescription works is that if a, a, a carer is identified within hospitals, either by staff or we have a carer's, uh, carer's workers within hospitals as well, which are dedicated for probably more specialised issues around caring. Um, they can actually fill in one of these electronic prescriptions. And all it is, is really a menu. So if a carer goes into the hospital and is helping out with the person that, that they love, and the husband, wife, daughter, son, um, what happens is the member of staff can actually say, look at talk to the carer, which they should be doing, as well as the patient, and um, say, oh, perhaps we need some social care, or perhaps we need some carer support, or perhaps we need some back care, or 
or various other sort of like services we speak to provide within Surrey, and they can then fill in one of these care prescriptions, and it is a menu, and they can tick various boxes on the menu, and then send it electronically, encrypted, through to um, the various agencies that provide that service. And literally what can happen is if that carer goes into hospital at 10 o'clock in the morning and sees uh, the person that they care for, um, and a member of staff picks up a, that carer, then they can actually have service probably midday, one o'clock in the afternoon, or at least be contacted by the service to provide service. So the carer's prescription. I mean, one of the things that probably I, I just need to highlight for Chris Kane was supposed to be here today, um, and she's been sewing all this partnership trust, and we've just done some of the stats for that. Um, in, from July to August, there was 128 carers' prescriptions that they produced. Um, that produced for carers that came into their contact uh, 624 services. So that's what services that went into to, to <coughs> health carers. Um, which resulted those people that wanted to go into social care and have a carer's assessment that resulted in 77 carer's assessments. Um, and 74 of those people that were <coughs> highlighted were actually helping people with dementia. So, you know, it has a very, very big impact for carers right across the county. But it's not only about dementia, this is right across, and this has been embedded within uh, GP surgeries as well uh, to identify carers and also the NHS. We also have a, a, a provider lead table and some of the numbers that I need to talk to you about regarding the prescription, which is our main sort of like pathway in now. Um, GPs um, for the Q, what we call Q1, which is um, the first quarter, that's from April to end of June. April to the end of June. Debbie does all the stats, so she's more up to it than me. Uh, 960 uh, carers, GPs referred in. Um, Royal Surrey, 137. Surrey Falls Partnership Trust, uh, 134. First Community, 74. I mean, the list goes on. So those numbers are growing every single month. And as I say, care prescription is the main way to get carers into services. Um, I think one of the other things that we have in our toolbox is um, in adult social care, including the Mental Health Trust, we now have 25 dedicated care of practice advisors and they help facilitate carers assessments. Uh, it's a really important role because not only as they act as the conduit between the carer and social care, um, but they deal with um, uh, those complex and, and manage complex caseloads. So it's a really useful um, uh, provisional resource to have within our, our commissioning intent. Can you just say what they're called again? They're called carers' practice advisors. And they're actually in the adult social care team. But they, they, they will work across the whole social care system. So they work with children too. So very briefly, because I think Leslie will start giving me... Um, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, Leslie, your reputation is easy. Um, so what are we going to be doing next to, to implement John's campaign? Well, first of all, certainly as part of our commissioning, so we're going to require all of our providers to have a careless action plan. We're going to look at that and we're going to be monitoring that. All our care providers have carer leads. Ron's mentioned our, our carer providers network. We now have over 200 carer leads in Surrey, all working at different levels. Uh, but all doing a vitally important job. Uh, we're going to make sure carers awareness training is, is a requirement in all our contracts. Um, we're going to uh, follow up on the carers passport scheme. You may have seen last week that the Department of Health in conjunction with Partners Carers UK and Carers Trust have now um, launched their website. If you haven't seen it, have a look. Carerpassport.uk. Really worth looking at that. Excellent for Mental Health Trust too. There's um, some evidence in there about how uh, a carer's passport can deliver John's campaign in mental health trusts. Um, we will be looking at getting the rest of our Surrey CCGs to sign up to John's campaign. Um, and we, as Ron has said, we will be providing quarterly monitoring to all our providers so they own their carer's work. 
Um, and finally, talking about, um, Lynn did a presentation this morning on continuing healthcare. This is an area that we're doing a lot of work on. We actually have a dedicated steering group for carers and CHD in Surrey. So we're, we're doing some really good work with them. And I'm actually presenting next week at the, the Care Home Forum on John's campaign. So it is about a systems-wide approach to taking the real best of John's campaign and making sure every, there's touch points at every service interface. So that's what we're doing. Keeps us quite busy. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we're here for the day, so come talk to us. Thank you.